Hey guys, so I'm sure everybody knows that the solar eclipse is coming up and everybody wants to know how to see it. Well, instead of using a pair of these, or a pair of these, I got a better solution for you. How about using some binoculars? I've got the project coming right up to show you how we adapted this lens filter to go onto these binoculars. Stay tuned. Please listen carefully. So first of all, I just want to say that um, I'm not advocating that anybody go out and stare at the eclipse, especially through a pair of binoculars. Do this at your own risk, but I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do it and how I'm going to use the pair of binoculars. So with that being said, let's jump into things. So I had a buddy of mine who came to me and said he found this film on Amazon and wanted to know how we could adapt it to some binoculars. Well, I recently got a 3D printer, the Maker Select Plus. I love it. So uh, I've been playing around with it quite a bit, made a few things now, and I'm going to go into that now. So. Um, Anyway, this is the first iteration I had here. It, uh, it was, uh, came out of basic necessity, really. I, I wanted to make something really simple. And so I came up with a zip tie idea that just tightened this down um, and then printed a basic 3D ring around it. And uh, the zip ties go through and then everything snugs down. So, all right guys, so I'm gonna jump in here and show you how I designed this in Fusion 360. If you haven't used this program, you should really check it out. It's free from Autodesk awesome for makers and whoever. Um, really impressed with it so check it out. So I'm going to step through this pretty quickly. So the first thing I did was create a sketch. This is what I'll use to revolve around the central axis here. This gives us a, a lip to hold against the binoculars here and here and then uh, the whole thing will allow us to put the zip tie through here. And I round the edges by creating some fillets make everything nice and smooth, no sharp edges, helps with the fitting it and also so that you don't cut your finger or anything else. Next thing I'm doing here is creating a sketch for cutting out this side profile and then I cut that out and create a circular mirror or a circular pattern of that whole thing and uh, I don't know, I, I like the way it looked, uh, looks kind of like a king, I don't know but king's crown but love it so I uh, hope you guys like it too hope that helped if you guys want more of a uh, overall tutorial about how this thing was created or, or made or whatever uh, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to take to revisit this and we can take a look at exactly how this was made and uh, help you guys out if you got any questions with fusion 360 so I'm just gonna give you guys a quick view of the 3d printer working here in a time-lapse I, like I said, I got that Maker Select Plus, and I'll leave a description for that below. But uh, the thing works super smooth, does all sorts of materials here, but I'm using PLA. I just uh, have less problems with warping, and it's a little more accurate with all that. It's not quite as strong, but really in this application, it's not necessary. Alright, so say you're done viewing and you're ready to be done with this, you just get right here next to one of the tabs and snip it with the pair of these and it pulls right off. Simple as that. So, like I said, I think we can do better than this. I want something reusable, so I'll show you what I came up with next. Alright, so I didn't really like the fact that I used the zip tie on this. It just bothered me a little bit. It wasn't as clean a solution as I'd like. So I wanted to develop something that allowed it just to tighten down on the binoculars by itself. So that's where this design came from and we're gonna get moving here. So I created a basic sketch, revolved it just like the last time, uh, got this thing, um, the basic general shape from the binoculars. But really the key here is these threads. These are actually tapered threads. I'll try to show that real quickly here. If you look, these threads don't don't come down completely vertical. And this allows the top and the bottom to snug up real tight. It limits it out also. So um, just a really good solution for something like this when you're trying to collapse in on a cylinder. So enough details. 
If you guys want more details, let me know. I would love to uh, to put out a video on Fusion on how to do this type of stuff, but uh, I'm not going to do that if nobody's interested, so just you guys just let me know if you're interested. So I created this whole thing as one solid piece and then broke it up into two pieces. That way everything fit together nice and smoothly. So the next thing here I did was to create the bumps on the outside of this. I created one and then did a circular pattern and created plenty of nibs on the outside to grip to tighten and loosen by hand. Did a little clean up here on the top and the bottom to really allow these things to slide together smoothly. That's what a lot of these commands are that you're going to be seeing here. Okay, so these next few things are, are kind of important. I want to show this real quick. Um, when you're creating threads, whether it be with a 3D printer or by machine, you need to create some clearance actually between the threads so that they mesh properly when working in the real world. So I created some relief off of these surfaces here on both the top and the bottom and allowed those to, to flow together smoothly. So now you can see there's a bit of a gap here and some of that will actually go away with a little bit of swelling that you'll get from the creation of the threads on the printer. I'm just rounding things up a little bit and then the next step really was uh, to print this thing out and give it a test run and I did that and I found that it wasn't everything fit well but it wasn't gripping the side of the binoculars as well as I wanted it to so I went ahead and created some teeth here on the outside of this to allow it to grip a little better and so I created one did a circular pattern again and cut out all of them and this allowed this thing to press in on the inside and uh, grip the side of this really well. So, really happy with that. And uh, if you guys got more questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to address them. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, so on this second design, I don't need any extra parts or extra tools. The whole thing is self-enclosed and uh, assembles really easily. I'm going to show you that. So I just put on this uh, bottom ring here. It fits right over the top. And then this second one that includes the filter uh, just sits right on here. The threads go here. Just press it on. Pretty nice and snug fit. And then you just bring this ring up here and the whole thing tightens on. And these threads are pretty fine. Uh, but that allows you uh, to be able to adjust the amount of torque or pressure on here so this thing snugs up nice and tight but you don't over you don't over snug it. But be careful about that because if you're printing it and it's anything like mine you can actually get the thing jammed and I put this thing in my lathe with some uh, pipe clamps I still couldn't get the thing off there so uh, just don't over tighten it. A uh, hand tight is plenty snug enough the thing does not come off at all so it's uh, it's pretty slick design here, but uh, you can see how everything works and uh, pretty happy with that. So a little bit about this design here, um, everything's completely enclosed and the way it actually works is there's tapered threads in here. So these threads, and you'll probably be able to see this better on the computer screen, so I'll flip to a shot of that, um, how I designed this, which I did in Fusion 360, but these, these threads aren't actually 90 degrees, they actually have a 4% four degree taper on them. So the way this works is this outer portion is also tapered with matching threads and as you tighten this down the cones push in and uh, the teeth on this thing or whatever you want to say the arms they push in and hold onto the outside of the binoculars. So this thing self tightens and uh, constricts itself from moving up and down. So um, pretty happy with that. So um, no external tools like I said and uh, just works man, just works. All right, so I got them done. Look pretty good. They're held on there nice and tight, so we're gonna give these things a whirl. Here we go. Nice. 
Hey, what's going on? What? I guess we're telling everybody now. Oh. We have new baby! Yay! Hooray! <laughs> hey guys, so we just want everybody to know our awesome news. Uh, Christine and I and the kids are so excited to have another baby coming into the family. Uh, we can't wait for them to get here. So if uh, my videos are lagging a little behind like they have been lately, uh, just bear with me. I'll be coming out with some more great material soon. Uh, but yeah, so can't wait for March and uh, it's going to be an awesome brand new adventure and another addition to the Bouchard family. So if you guys initially subscribed to me for woodworking and you're like, hey, this is a 3D printing video or whatever you want to call it. Stay tuned, I got more woodworking coming up, but you're going to be seeing more stuff like this, you're going to be seeing some electronics, so this channel is just going to grow along with the projects that I like to do. I like to mix it up, I like to do different media and things like that. Wood's my go-to, it's beautiful, I love it, so there'll be plenty of that, but I'm going to mix in some other things like the 3D printer, things like that. So if you like what you see, stick around, share it with your friends, any little bit helps me out. Thanks guys. So another thing is that the links that you see below are going to be a list of my tools. I just incorporated that and got links that uh, help me out there. So those are affiliate links. I get a kickback. You guys don't pay anything, but if you like to support my channel, or if you see a tool in any of my videos that you want to see, I'm going to leave all the important information for the video as far as links for purchasing that stuff goes. And uh, if you guys want to purchase that stuff, that helps me out. And uh, you guys can see exactly what I use. I know that's not the very best materials or the, maybe the best tools out there, but hey, I'm on a budget. I'm sure you are too. So um, check that out. Um, if you want to order some from Amazon, I get a little bit of a kickback. It helps me produce these videos and uh, keeps this ball rolling. I've been making these videos. I hope you're enjoying watching them. If you are, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't mix, miss my next one. Uh, and please, if you would, share this on your social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you might be doing that. I'd really appreciate it. The channel's growing. I'm happy to see that. I want to give a shout out to Jay Bates. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, I got featured on his weekly What's on the Web, and uh, that was awesome. Really appreciated that. So uh, it gave me a great boost, but I'm glad to see the channel's growing. I hope you guys are liking what you see. Uh, throw me some comments down below and let me know the type of projects you'd like to see in the future. Do you want less 3D printing videos, uh, more woodworking, I got some electronics coming up with some Arduino and things like that. Uh, some basic stuff, I'm uh, really just getting into that, but uh, we'll, we'll work it in. So let me know what you guys think and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. We love the baby when we're watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I'm loving making these videos. I hope you're enjoying watching them. If you like them, hit the subscribe button. You get more of this action. And uh, <laughs> you get more of this action. How weird. Alright. Hey guys, I'm loving making these videos and showing you guys the projects I'm working on. If you guys like it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and share it wherever you're doing your... Uh, uh, what the hell is that called? Facebook, Instagram... Social media. That's it. Alright, here we go.